Remember this part that we made? It was actually on the setting tool offsets for the lathe. It was just a widget, but uh, you know, I have uh, this brand new rotary brooch from Tormach, and I'm really looking for an excuse to play with it. And I thought, well, this will be fun. Let's take this little part and let's machine a hex on the outside. Not too easy with an end mill. Then let's use the rotary brooch to machine a hex on the inside. Folks, this is the coolest thing ever. Uh, super excited to play with it. Let's use Fusion to create the CAD and the CAM. And then let's head over to the machine and make what you're not supposed to do, which is square or sharp corners on a rotary type milling machine. S super excited, folks. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Fusion will do a sketch. Polygon circumscribed polygon okay that sounds complicated to me but whatever we'll choose our face here and we'll just go like so and we'll say point uh let's see your point six i gotta make sure we got enough room the part is only 0.75 or so so what's that dimension that's way too big so 0.75 there we go and we will right click Press pull, click that, negative 0.25, and now we've got our hex head, and then we need to put the hole in it. There is a technical document, link in the video description below from Tormach, but it's great. It gives you starting feeds and speeds for the recipe here, which I definitely need because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. We're going to use the 6 millimeter, so what we need to do is not only do a 0.247 hole, but as you can see over here, we need to have a chamfer, which is going to help guide the tool into the hole create hole pick our face and we can just drag this over and snap it to the middle and then here we will change it oh it's already on countersink uh, normally it defaults to simple and you would choose countersink and we will say depth of 0.3 just to make sure it goes all the way through 0.25 and this is cheating it's showing the settings that I had because I was practicing this before the video but you just choose countersink diameter. The, the a guide says 0.277. We're going to do 3,000 more. Just go to around 0.28 at 90 degrees. Click OK, and perfect. We click inspect or measure, and we click here. We have 0.25. Uh, it's precision here. That's, well, let's take a look at that. Uh, this should be 0.28. There we go. Now, why isn't that? Right-click edit feature oh that's why I did that intentionally point two or seven make sure we're okay perfect model cam and let's do 2d contour awesome trick folks thank you for pointing this out in the last video we posted on the spindle uh, tool for the Tormach, or the spindle split clamp for the Tormach. When we'll first we'll pick our tool. I'm going to do a three sixteenths here. When you're selecting your geometry, my gripe was how weird it is to select partial contours. S super easy, not intuitive, but super easy. Hold down Alt, that lets you select individual contours. God bless. What I don't like is you can't deselect some of them, or someone tell me how you can do that. I would like to know. Also, if you hit delete here, it deletes the whole operation, which is, which is silly. That's what I did a second ago. So fix that, uh, folks, over at Autodesk. But still, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Boop, boop, boom. I don't need to select partial contour. And let's just do our bottom, model bottom. I think this will be good. Perfect. You know, we'll do that in two, we'll do a finish pass just to make it nice. So we can do finish, multiple finish passes, 0.01 and 2, and that should give us a little cleanup. There we go, like so. 2D adaptive clearing. We're going to do the same tool, and we're just going to click on this. Oops. A chain there, and something that's a tighter hole like this, we know we're going to need to tighten up the ramp. I'm going to increase the ramp in helix, but this dimension here, the ramp diameter, just go real small and make sure you get a tool path. 
which I don't, oops, I forgot we have stock to leave uh, left on. Now, I don't blame them for making that the default because it is helpful and a lot of times 2D adaptive clearing isn't always a finishing operation, but I would rather go in and add it than not. So there, there's a way to um, set defaults and I, I don't know how to default it to being off, but one thing I bet we can do is just right click this and say make all default. So it's on, but it's zero. So we'll see. Hopefully this gets us a toolpath. It does. Now that's way too narrow, unnecessarily narrow. Um, the little red lines are the helical rampant. So let's increase it as close as we can to the um, actual radius or, or hole. Oops. That was on the wrong one. Sorry. 0.05. Perfect. That was good. So now you can see the red is just a little bit smaller than the blue. I like it. Now let's do the chamfer. So 2D contour. For me, it's tool 25. Uncheck flat end mill. Spot drill is my 90 degree mill drill tool. And this is kind of cool. We'll pick that line and I guess it's even though it's a 2D contour, it already sees that it's a chamfer tool or, or chamfer in the solid model. I don't know which it is, but it picks it up, which is awesome. If we click OK, ignore mill to, oh, hold on. So this is my fault. I have um, that set up as a drill and not a, um, and not a chamfer end mill. So let's see here if we do this and edit tool, we should be able to change it from a spot drill to chamfer end mill. Click OK. OK, OK. OK. Perfect. Now we get our toolpath. You never really want to in, uh, chamfer with the very, very tip of the tool. Fusion makes it easy. We just go into Passes tab and we do chamfer tip offset 0.025 and you'll see it brings it down and over. And then lastly, we'll simulate this later, but let's just do our drilling for the rotary brooch. We will create a new tool and units inches. I will say that it is 0.25, it's six millimeter, but I don't really care in this instance. Where do I put the tool number in? Oh, here we go, post processor. It'll be 161 for me. Feeds and speeds. We want 700 RPM and then it wants three inches per rev and for some of you machinists out there, that may be not how you think. You're just thinking the down feed, but look at this in Fusion. It says feed per rev, 0.03, oh sorry, 3 thou, 003, 2.1 inches a minute plunge. Perfect. Click OK, OK, pick our hole, and then we just need to make sure we'll do it from, hole, from model top, and then I'm actually going to go from model top down, negative 0.2. I don't want to run the rotary brooch into the bottom of the of the material obviously so click OK and we see our tool path oops hold on I got something wrong here oh no we're good sorry the green is the green is the uh, drill tool path simulate I had the wrong stock in there but that doesn't matter Okay, you know what, let's fix the stock because otherwise it's not going to look any good for uh, So we'll do fixed size cylinder, 0.75, that's actually a little bit bigger, 0.76. Oops, do we have a problem? Oh, I did goof. I'm glad we did that. We will quickly fix that. 0.25, that's awesome. Um, so go back into CAM. This is one thing that's awesome about integrated. Uh, integrated CAD CAM. I goofed. When I did my first thing, I was measuring the wrong dimension for 0.75. Right now, we have this point to that point. It needs to be 0.75. Stop sketch. Go back to CAM. Generate toolpath. I swear I didn't do that intentionally. <laughs> we're, we're good. Now, let's simulate it. 
much better. I'm comfortable taking that in a full depth with just one cleanup pass like that. Come in here and you could drill that, but I don't mind uh, keeping one tool in there for it. There's our lead in, and then here is the Pucker Factor rotary brooch. Here we go. Does it work? Let's pull it out and take a look. How cool is that, folks? So take a look. Got that part we turned on a, with a nut on it. Six millimeter socket, like so. Could have gone deeper for sure. The nut's a little tight. Look at that. Look at that, folks. How freaking cool is that? Boop. It's a great fit. I don't know how to tell you otherwise, but it really is. Um, I didn't, it didn't go that deep. It would have been great for a through hole, and if you actually take a close look up front, in the brooch hole, you can see it's broaching. Broaching, folks, is like shaping, or it's like shaving a, um, a draw shave, pulling off a chip or pushing a chip away, and that's what this is doing. And when the first time I ran this tool, it stopped turning, and I thought, oh my God, I just broke it. But no, of course it makes sense. What it's doing is, I think it's wobbling at like one degree, so it is creating some slot, but so minor. And look what it can do, folks. So. Um, I was super excited to buy this. When Tormach came out with it, I thought, that's awesome. I know they, they didn't invent it. It's been around for a while, but it's one of those things that isn't as common at, at our level, at the sort of hobby or lower end level, which is cool. On the flip side, I open it up and it's like four millimeter, five millimeter, six millimeter hexes, which is like the least important thing I care about. So if you're interested, stick around folks, because one of the things I want to do is take uh, a piece of material and turn uh, imperial sized hexes and then I, what I really want to do is turn some square brooches because I think square holes are where it really will be cool and where it's at so with that folks hope you enjoyed take care see you soon